Rand here playing Farming Simulator 22, and welcome back to the Upper Mississippi River Valley. Continuing on with wheat harvest here in this episode. We're, what, maybe a small half of the way done here with the second field. In between episodes, finished up the first field, so that field is finished. Speaking of which, I should probably go grab the baling tractor and get that uh, field bailed up here. Again, as a reminder, want to get that uh, field turned around and we're planning on planting soybeans on that field all three of these fields here in fact so we got two fields of wheat and then also a field of oats that is ready to harvest here as well i was not expecting the oat field to be ready Evan, but uh, it is ready so that'll be good three fields of soybeans not going to complain about that right especially when you can uh, double crop and, and when it comes to the oats Evan, we're like doing like really a true double crop there uh two crops right within the same season uh, you know, wheat kind of sort of gets planted the winter before, so... But it, it's still two crops on the same field, right? So, I think, is soybeans... I should probably check this. Is soybeans the only one we can do this with here? Uh, well, yeah, okay, some of this stuff, sure, but I, I don't think that really quite counts. Uh, speaking of which, we can do clover and alfalfa on this map. I'm sure maybe you can look at doing something of that here, but uh, we'll see you once. So, yeah, it looks like, I think, soybeans... Soybeans is the only one, right? I think so. And then wheat. Oh, and canola, too. Uh, wheat, canola, and oats. Although, based on the time you have to plant canola, I don't know if you can actually technically double crop it with uh, if you did canola there. Anyway, it looks like we're still uh, yielding up pretty good here yet on the soybeans. Running the John Deere X9 1100 yet here, of course, with the uh, John Deere HD... 50F, I think that's the number of it. I can never remember the number of this one for some reason. Go run, go run this side. Yeah, John Deere HD 50S, F. A lot of the uh, headers, a lot of times they'll say it on like the side here, but this particular header has it right up along that uh, bar just inside there, kind of a little bit hard to see when you have the air uh, system on there. Not sure how much uh, value the air system provides when it comes to like wheat or something like that, but I know like soybeans, uh, crops that are a little bit uh, closer to the ground, which a wheat typically, as long as you have a good wheat crop anyway, it's not like a crop that is super close to the ground. Wheat usually stands fairly tall. Although I have heard uh, they are working on some uh, newer varieties that have a little bit shorter uh, stem on them, I guess. You know, put more of their energy into the head of wheat as opposed to, you know, growing nice and tall. I know one might be a time to think, ooh, grow some really nice tall wheat. Well, tall wheat's great and all of them, but we don't really care how tall it is. What we care about is how it yields, right? Now, mind you, if nice tall wheat yields great, well, then, sure, great being tall. But, uh, you know, if the plant is busy putting all its energy into growing tall and not uh, filling out that head of wheat, it doesn't do a whole lot of good. Not to mention, too, Evan, if you have really tall wheat, uh, it tends to be a little more susceptible to damage as well. It's always one of the big uh, concerns with wheat. Uh, once wheat gets close to being ready to harvest, you hope you don't have any uh, big storms or any wind or anything like that that could uh, potentially knock the wheat over. It's never, uh, never a good thing, right? We are actually, you know what? Uh, I'm not even about to turn around here. We're just gonna put the pipe out. Uh, still running the grain cart manually here, by the way. And then some of the trucks sometimes too here. I actually use the trucks there to finish up in between episodes because again, I don't really have the grain cart set up. Um, this field, you know, again, once we have the field opened up, everyone, uh, we could probably make this work with auto drive, but this is just one of those. Uh, maps that does not uh, seem to lend itself well in my opinion uh, to like fully automating with AI and stuff like that anyway we'll get the combine unloaded here a minute and I might just actually uh, throw this back on course play here as well I've got course play set up for this here at least it should be anyway let's might have to double check that And then maybe we'll go get the uh, baler tractor going there on the next uh, field. And if I'm not mistaken, two of one, <laughs> and of course, go figure, right? 
Uh, we've got some more work to do that field too than just uh, bailing. I'm pretty sure it needs lime as well from what I've seen. Oh boy, an overshoot just a little bit there. Put on brakes. For those who didn't see last episode, picked up a John Deere 9570 RX. Oh, long overdue, Evan. Long overdue. I missed me a good uh, John Deere tractor here. Ah, yes. Yep, I like the looks of that. And then, of course, we picked up a grain cart along with it here as well. A Demco 1300 22-inch dual auger. I think that dual auger refers to the fact that it has a belly auger and a uh, you know auger here as well. At least I'm assuming that's what it means by dual auger. It's not like, not like there's two augers here. So I'm pretty sure there's one down here and then one here. That being said, this auger does have a nice uh, reach to it. I do like that. And I'm still, like, uh, surprised. One single axle for all of that. I'm a 1,300 bushels. Single axle. Wow. That is a lot of weight resting right there. Gotta wonder about uh, compaction and stuff like that. Missed a little bit there. I'm sure well, actually why either. I think we're lined up pretty good. Speaking of being lined up pretty good, let's uh, hop up the force play here a minute. We're just going to do nearest. So we'll just, hopefully we're lined up in the right direction here. I think we are. There we go. We'll just let the force play take over here for a few minutes. Keep the uh, harvesting uh, process moving here. And then I'm going to go grab probably the uh, Kubota track. Wow, look at that. What are the chances? Uh, actually, no way. No. Maybe not the Kubota tractor, because... That's right, we got a square baler. I should probably put the Fent tractor on it. Yeah, I suppose I probably should. Where's the Fent tractor at? That's actually a good question. I'm not sure. Hey, look at that. There we go. Oh, yes, it's on that... Uh, that thing. Not sure how I feel about that thing. As I've said before, but I'm not a big proponent of OP equipment. But, rocks. I might have to break my own rules, that one. Like I said, as a general rule of thumb, that one, I kind of tend to stay away from OP equipment. Uh, now, of course, I do make the exception for auto-loading equipment. Uh, I do make an exception for that one. Because let's face it, uh, John Deere's uh, physics here are so awful in this game. that I, Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, everyone. I do not have the patience. Uh, for putting up with John Deere's, or uh, Giants physics. Uh, ex especially as someone that drives that type of equipment in real life, everyone. Yeah. I think I'd rather go uh, do that uh, test that was in the uh, news here a couple of days ago. For those who didn't hear about it, uh, there was some sort of uh, study that was being done. Uh, would you rather sit in silence or be shocked? Uh, so they hooked a bunch of uh, people up, I guess, had them sit in a quiet room, and they had the option to either sit quietly or push a button and be shocked. And now I'm guessing the shock probably wasn't, like, terrible, but probably wasn't pleasant either from... Uh, my understanding in the news article for those who didn't see it. So, do you would you uh, just sit in quiet, or would you rather be shot? Um, and I think, if I remember correctly, it was pretty much unanimous. 100% of the people chose to get shot rather than just sit quietly for like uh, 20 minutes, or however I don't remember how long the time period was there again, everyone, but. I think the same thing applies for uh, Giants Physics here. Would you like to deal with Giants Physics, or would you rather just get an electrical shock? I think I'll take an electrical, sh electrical shock. Thank you. Okay, course play. Uh, let's see. Yeah, if I do that, oh, that actually might work. We need field 48, 50 meter harvest, load, activate. Should be good. First, actually, yeah, the first waypoint's actually up here. When I started harvesting, I mean, I've started right in the corner there, but when I started the course, like course, I started it, yeah, right there. I 
I've been told if I uh, change up the uh, tire configuration on this uh, tractor oven, supposedly it'll have a little bit better uh, turning radius. Oh, it looks good this way, though, oven. But it would be nice to have a better turning radius. Oh, that was a bit of a nasty lag spike there with that auto save. I don't know. What do you what do you folks think? Uh, do we go for the aesthetics? Which, at least in my opinion, I mean, the aesthetics of this tractor are quite good. I mean, it is the wrong color green. We'll try not to hold that against it. But, uh, you know, other than being the wrong color green, Evan, mean, that looks pretty mean with these uh, dual tires on it, doesn't it? That looks pretty good, if you ask me. But if we went for, I don't know what the other tire options would be on this particular tractor. I'm not even actually sure. And I don't know... Like, okay, what tire options would we have to go with here to actually get better better turning radius? I don't know. Actually, is this the right one? Um, but that's not the right one. Probably need... Ah, yes, probably this one, I bet. Yep, that's we own one of those. Okay. 36-inch spacing. Oh, my goodness. That's got uh, that's got some spread to it. I think that's more for like vegetable crops and stuff like that, right, Owen? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. That, that could be what that's for. I I forget exactly again. Whoa, 22 inch space. And that's really narrow. Is there 30? Oh, back trip. Whoa. <laughs> hmm. I don't know, one. Uh, I might just have found another. I might have to try this one, everyone. <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't, because I'm guessing we have twin wheels. I don't know what twin wheels two means. I don't see any weights in there. Rear narrow twin. I wouldn't think that would change anything, because like the, the the inside tires are still the same spot. I would imagine. Yeah, they don't change much. That might actually be a little bit better, because I mean, if you watch, you see the inside tires. Looks like they moved out a little bit. It actually looks like they moved out quite a bit. Still keeps the duels. Might have to look into doing that one, I one. I do like the looks of the triples, though. That does look pretty mean. Back triples. Yeah. Wow. Okay, then. Uh, this... Uh, Boy, for those of you who watch, oh, what's his name on uh, YouTube? Yeah, no, what's what's his name, right? Uh, Faith Hope Farms there. Mm, Mike Mitchell, there. Couldn't think of the name for a minute, everyone. Uh, Mike Mitchell on YouTube. This looks like maybe the tractor he was running. He had uh, triples, and this was probably about the size of the triples he had, I think, on his tractor, too. I don't remember what he had on the front. I know he had duels, but I don't know if they were quite this uh, big or not. But, yeah, he was running triples. He was running the wide triples, too, yet, so... Standard. Hmm. Actually, you know, oh, you know what? They probably got to change brands here, I bet. Let's say it shows LSWs in the picture. There we go. Oh, lizard ones too. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um. No, nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we'll, uh, we'll probably stick with our duels. Might try the 22-inch spacing one, though. Uh, you know, if we're not running this tractor in corn, just doing, like, bailing and stuff like that. Eh. Duels, sure. But we don't need the crazy 30-inch... Uh, well, I shouldn't say crazy, but uh, the 30-inch spacing, necessarily. I'll load this combine here a minute. Oh, let's see. Anything else we need to do on here while we're outside of the combine? I don't think so, actually. I went good uh, grain cart driver there. We just uh, drove over that uh, wheat. Pretty sure that's what you're supposed to do as a grain cart driver, right? I want any uh, crop that's left standing that the combine might have missed. You're supposed to just, you know, just drive over it. We're going to be almost full here, too. Actually, no, probably are going to be full. One uh, slight complaint here with... Oh, my. Okay. Brakes on this tractor. Note. Uh, 
Um, anyway, yeah, going back to what I was about to say there, Evan. Uh, one slight quibble here with this uh, grain cart. It holds like two and a half loads from the time. Like two and a half. It's like, oh man, come on now. It'd be nice if it held just a little bit more of them. Just, just like a little bit more. And we get a full, like, three loads in it, or real close anyway. But oh well. It does not. Let's see what this might, uh, might about fill one of these trucks up too. I'm not sure. We'll find out here. Oh, you can tell the grain cart's loaded down a little bit here. When the tractor's pulling it, but it's not, uh, not pulling it quickly. Now, we do have a 9570RX here, by the way. Again, I mean, I didn't just uh, bump this right up to the, you know, 9620RX. I thought about it. I initially had it selected. I was like, you know what? Let's, let's try something different. We'll go with a 9570. I mean, what's another uh, 50 horsepower anyway, right? You know, back in the day, another 50 horsepower was probably all the horsepower you had back in the day. Driving around with a 50 horsepower tractor. And by the way, a reminder, while we're unloading here, uh, don't forget to uh, click that uh, subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Always very much appreciated. And of course, once you are subscribed, everyone, make sure you turn on your notifications. That way you get notified the latest, greatest Upper Mississippi River episode goes live, or any episodes for that matter. And of course, I mean, uh, don't forget uh, to, uh, don't, uh, wait yeah, don't forget to uh, to click the uh, like button as well if you haven't already done so. Give the video a thumbs up; always very much appreciated. Oh, should probably uh, check and see what's how full that uh, truck is here. A moment, un momento, here, everyone. Un momento. Let's uh, see once. Uh, not, yeah, we're just gonna, I think we'll just have that truck uh, go unload here. We're gonna call that, uh, full. Uh, speaking of which, by the way, it took, um, I think two full loads. Maybe it was three. I'd have to go check here, Dan. We, we can go look at the, uh, storage here in the menu in just a moment. I think we took two or three full loads down to the, uh, upper Mississippi rail silo here already. And again, by the way, I'm pretty much just taking my crop straight down there, because... That's more than likely where it's going to sell. And then this way, I, mean, I don't have to take it down during the middle of winter. So as soon as we're done harvesting, just take it straight down there, right, everyone? Make, made sense to me anyway. Oh, we're going to make it. I kind of lost my speed there. Got a big old blob of straw that's just like right there. Come on, truck. No. We're just going to sit here and spin, aren't we? Okay. It's too bad the uh, like the tow chain and tow ropes and stuff like that don't work a little bit better in the game. It'd be kind of fun to grab a tractor and the tow chain and uh, actually just you know pull that up out of there. But uh, unfortunately, I don't know, unless you folks have better experience. In my experience, that stuff doesn't work for well in the game here. Okay, we need to turn you on. Oh, good. You're actually going to the right place, too. Half the time when I go to turn this on, I'm like, oh, back to field 47? No, to the uh, rail silo, please. Then back to 47. Okay, that should be good. Let's go check the menu here a minute. Again, the time-saving stock check mod. For those of you who have not seen this mod before, oh, you folks are missing out. And again, thanks to the uh, individual, or maybe it was individuals that recommended this mod to me back when I first started this series. Oh, like I said, if you folks are not using this mod, what's wrong with you? Get this mod. This is definitely a great mod to have. Um, one one little caveat here, maybe. Um, it's not available for the consoles here as far as I know. I could be wrong on that. This maybe could be a console mod. I doubt it, though. But I'm, I'm guessing there's probably some third-party scripting involved with this mod, so... But again, great mod if you are on the PC. The time-saving stock check available on the official farming simulator mod hub. Uh, a question I do get asked somewhat frequently is why I don't have a mod list, Evan. Because most of the stuff I download right from in the game here, Evan. Like, it's, it's right in the game. 
So again, you can check out either the website or again, you right in the game. I want to just go to the mods and there it'll be. So time saving stock check mod. Uh, wheat, yep, 220,000 liters, about to add another almost 100,000. So we've taken three loads here already then. Uh, 324,000 sitting there. Oh, no, 216 in there at the moment, 324 at the max price. And of course, January. Ah, who would have guessed that one? Who would have guessed? January, best time to sell price. Oh, well, is what it is, I guess. Back to the map. Looks like we're doing good on the bailing. Oh, is the combine full again? Yeah, he didn't quite fully unload there, so. Nice thing when you're running this with force play as opposed to maybe like a hired work weapon. Force play at least gives you room to unload, right? That is nice. Okay, anyway, over to the uh, comment section here a moment. And as a reminder, if you folks haven't left a comment uh, before, always very much appreciated. Appreciated. Ooh, talk here today, right? Uh, always very much appreciated. And, of course, I always uh, try to read your comments here as well if I can and respond to them. Uh, so, again, if you haven't left a comment, be sure to do so. And with that being said, let's head over to the comments here and see what you folks had to uh, say. Uh, Norton was saying, I've been selling pigs at 24 months. Ooh, pigs, I should, uh, actually, you know what? I think I checked the pigs already, right? You folks need to remind me to check my pigs, because I keep forgetting about them. Oh, yeah, they're, they're good at the moment. We have, these are nine months, and these are zero months. I'm probably going to forget to check them again here at some point. Poor pigs. It's what PETA hasn't been called. Um, anyway, Norton was saying again, I've been selling pigs for 24 months. I uh, may have to start selling sooner because they are running out of room. Yes, that's kind of what I was suspecting. Um, and no matter how I run the numbers on this one, at some point you are going to run out of room. Even if you start with like one pig, um, at some point it, the numbers are just going to keep doubling. Now mind you, if you have one pig and you're starting off with a 500 holding pen, it's probably going to take a while, but still, at some point, if you play long enough, you will run out of room. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at the numbers. That one, do we just, like, uh, once these pigs here are ready to... Is it these pigs or these? Once these pigs are ready to reproduce, do we sell these? Or once these... I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'm going to see once here. I guess, technically, once these pigs... No, these pigs are ready to reproduce, then we can sell these. I think, right? Uh, we'll see once. Uh, Hatro was saying, good video. Hey, thank you very much for that. Uh, Fred was saying, you should try course play to run the grain cart. Works pretty good. Uh, it does automatically. No course. Ooh. Ah. Well, thank you. For, I don't know why I did not think of this before. One. Uh, but yes, I could just, uh, I could throw this on course play. In fact, you know what? I can do this right now. I, duh. Don't know why I didn't think of this before. That, that's why I got you folks watching here. So you folks can tell me uh, tell me things like this. So let's see what's here. Yeah, just literally turn this on. And you know what? I'll probably move this truck here. I'll maybe move it up around the other side here. And we'll, we'll get to how this works here in just a second. I have used this before. I uh, don't know why I didn't think of this up until this point. Um, it's not necessarily going to be like fully automated. But it does work pretty good, and um, I could probably take care of, you know, just once the truck is full, have course play go, or I'm just, no, be auto drive at this point, have auto drive go unload the truck. Also, lots of missing weed around this field. I'm not sure what's up with that. Yeah, these trucks don't like uh, going up and over some of these uh, wind roll piles, especially once they start getting a little bit fuller. Actually, speaking of being fuller, this one actually is 72%. Wow. Get a lot of weed off this field already. Okay, just going to park that right there for now. And yeah, don't know why I didn't think of this before, so uh, thank you very much for that there, uh, Fred. 
But uh, when it comes to uh, course play, I mean, uh, course play works really good for running a grain cart. Uh, basically, all you have to have everyone, is a trailer of some sorts on the field or something for course play to unload into. Uh, course play should automatically find and detect it. And then course play will automatically unload the uh, combine or I'm assuming combines too on the field. And like for those of you uh, maybe looking for easier ways, like maybe you don't understand how to use course play or understand how to use auto drive stuff like that. One, like this is pretty simple with course play. One, like course play, you literally just click the play button. That's all you have to do. Like there's nothing else to do. One, you just click that and you're done. That's it. It doesn't get any simpler, I don't think, right? So, yeah, for those of you uh, afraid of using course play uh, because you think it might be too complicated or something like that and you do want to run a grain cart, like, like uh, this is easy. I mean, like, anyone can do this. But as long as you have a PC, you know, again, uh, the whole console thing, consoles can't have course play. So, if you're a console user, sorry, you know, no course play, but or auto drive for that matter. I see our other truck is here now as well. You know what? Might just uh um oh he's trying is he trying to load ah <laughs> wow I did not actually think that was gonna happen. This is the uh, one field where course play can actually or I'm sorry auto drive. Apologies, Evan. I, I'm always getting auto drive and course play mixed up, but uh, this is the one field where auto drive can actually somewhat get out of and into a little bit. As long as it uh, can get up and out of that entrance there, which is uh, a big if. Uh, yeah, course play can actually, or of course, auto drive can actually uh, like fully automate this field. Nice thing here with uh, course play too. Uh, course play has a significant advantage over auto drive. Most of the time, auto drive everyone will not unload on the go. I have seen it a few times, everyone, but I want to emphasize a few times. Like very, very rarely will auto drive unload on the go. Course play though, that like course play unloads on the go. This is probably also why in the past course play also tends to be a little bit more derpy, but. Uh, let's see what's here. I want to go to my course play settings here because I noticed a little something. And these should be default settings in my opinion. But raise tools, you want it to raise late. Lower tools, you want it to lower early. And hopefully that'll help a little bit of the uh, missing sometimes at the ends there. Again, those should be like default options in my opinion. And that is a per vehicle. That's a per vehicle or per equipment setting. I'm not entirely sure how that setting works, that one, but... Uh, Keith was saying, uh, if you're going to buy another combine, you need to take Mike Mitchell's approach. He can buy five used John Deere 690s to one X9. Now all we need is a used equipment mod like we had back in Farming Simulator 19. That is a very good point there, Keith. And um, technically, oh, wrong one, shop. Uh, we do have, like, used equipment here. Oh, a John Deere. That's interesting. Ooh, tank. A New Holland corn cutter. A 980 CR, 10 meters wide. I think that's a narrow row one, which whole another topic for another time. I mean, why Giants has narrow row heads in the game, I, I don't understand. But anyway, it's not like there's any narrow row planters in the game, is there? I don't think there is. I could be wrong, but yeah, nothing good in the uh, used vehicle sale here. But uh, yeah, for those who don't know, and... I don't know, I guess this is just not something I use very often. Uh, but there is a used vehicle section. I mean, you can usually save some pretty good money here at times. I mean, if you want to go buy this corn header, it's normally probably somewhere around the eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 mark here because it's 52% off here at the moment. So that, that puts it, you know, what it could probably 85000 or so brand new. You can buy it for forty one. dollars Now, if I remember correctly, what is the, I think the downside to this... Can you lease this? No, you have to buy it. I don't think you can actually lease these. Which seems a little odd if you think about it. I mean, you can lease used equipment in real life, right? I don't know, whatever. But, uh, yeah. 
something to keep in mind of it. You can buy it real cheap. I think your uh, maintenance costs are a little bit higher, though, because it is used. So just something to keep in mind. I think that's the only downfall as far as I know. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong in that, but... Uh, Christopher was saying, good video, keep it up. Hey, thank you very much for that. And looking at the time, I think it is time to wrap it up here for this episode. So that you folks have any comments and or questions, be sure to leave them down below. And as always, Evan, thanks for watching. Until next time.